Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, today's TPD webinar. Uh, we have a series of speakers, um, both uh, presented, uh, published their recent, uh, recent stories uh, around um, uh, targeted protein localization and in, in its impacts on, on product mediated degradation and also discovery of new, li new ligase binders. So those, these two stories will be presented today. We'll start with uh, Lorraine Glini and Luke Simpson. And um, today, two presentations are both from University of Dundee. So it's great to see such a uh, such an internal seminar presented in in an, uh, in, in, in in the DFC TPD webinar. So um, Lorraine and Luke um, will be presenting a story around uh, target protein localization and its impact on protein mediated degradation. Uh, Lorraine is a PhD student in uh, Sapoca Lab in the MRCPPU at the University of Dundee, and her PhD work uh, branches two main areas. Uh, she inv she's investigating the impact of cellular factors on product mediated degradation and also exploring how uh, FAN83 proteins control cellular fractions uh, with the inter via the interaction with casein kinase uh, 1. And prior to her PhD, she obtained uh, BSc in molecular biology in the University of Edinburgh uh, and um, biomedical uh, sciences uh, MRS at the University of Glasgow. And she was focusing there on the regulation of inflammatory signaling by uh, post-translational modifications. Uh, Luke uh, has completed his PhD uh, in the same lab um, and under supervision of uh, Gopal and Dr. Ian Ganley at the MRC uh, Protein Phosphorylation and Nucleation Unit at the University of Dundee. And Luke's uh, doctoral research centered around exploring technologies for uh, targeted protein modification and involved combined use of uh, nanobody and also product-based technologies for, for TPD space. And since obtaining his PhD, Luke joined uh, Professor Arasio Kuli's group uh, at the Center for uh, Protein Degradation at the University of Dundee, uh, where he's a cell biologist or as part of the product discovery collaboration with BI. Uh, Luke and Lorraine, welcome, uh, and I'm really excited to hear your talk, so uh, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you very much, Radek, for the introduction, um, and thank you to the organisers for this fantastic opportunity to present on such a great platform, um, where I think both myself and Lorraine can say it's been an absolute staple during our PhDs and during our project work in the, in the TPD field. Um, and as Radek said, um, both um, myself and Lorraine worked in Gopal's group, where we worked on a PhD project together, where we investigated the impact of target protein localization on um, the efficiency of protein mediated degradation. Okay. Yeah, so we were interested in characterizing this mechanism of protein mediated degradation and how these small heterobifunctional molecules can target a specific protein in the cell and media is degradation via an E3 ligase complex and these protats can capture a target protein in the cell using one binding warhead and via a flexible linker region can then connect it to an E3 ligase that will then mediate ubiquitination and degradation and protats can recruit the target protein using small molecule binders that are commonly based on inhibitors, drugs, compounds or chemical moieties that are already known to bind the target protein um, that can then capture it in the cell. And targeting of endogenous cellular proteins using protect based technologies has been extremely exciting for both research and therapeutic purposes. As I'm sure you know, it can offer a highly specific method of targeting a protein. However, a large part of the proteome, sorry, a large part of the proteome still remains unligandable, which makes continuing to target endogenous proteins quite difficult using small molecule binders which is when tag-based systems become very useful. So by adding a tag onto the protein, we can use optimized protac warheads that can bind to the tag and the cell, therefore mediating degradation of the protein of interest and still allowing, allowing us to study protein function and activity. Now, there's a wide variety of tag-based systems available to use for protac mediated technologies, including the DTAG system, which was originally developed by Benham Nabbit that is predicated on the use of this mutant version of the cellular endogenous protein FKBP12. So this protein carries a mutation, a residue 36, that creates a distinct pocket in the protein that isn't present on the wild type form. 
that can be bound by this bump ligand AP1867. And we can use this ligand as the bump and hole mechanism as a protag warhead to recruit D-tag proteins in the cell and therefore mediate their degradation. There's also the halo tag system, which was originally developed in 2008, that again uses this mechanism of a small chemical handle binding into a pocket on the halo tag that we can adopt for as a protag warhead by using the chloroalkene moiety. We can recruit halo tag proteins in the cell and mediate their degradation. We also have the bromo tag system, which is a more recent development by, here in Dundee by Alessio Chile and Dario Lessi's lab. That again is based on this bump and hole mechanism of using a mutant form of the setting bromo domain of the cellular protein BRD4 that carries a leucine to alanine mutation that again creates a distinct pocket that can be bound by this ligand based on the pan bet inhibitor IBET762. And similar to the DTAG system, if we can use this ligand as a protag warhead to recruit bromo tag proteins in the cell and mediate their degradation. So once protags recruit, target proteins using these various chemical handles. It can then guide it towards an A3 ligase complex using a second binding warhead that will recruit specifically the substrate recognition receptor of the E3 complex. The most commonly VHL and Cerebron have been hijacked um, previously for TPD studies, but recently many efforts are underway to diversify the pool of E3s and substrate receptors available for hijacking for targeted degradation. And once the protag can recruit a substrate receptor, it then brings the larger E3 ligase complex that's responsible for mediating ubiquitination and degradation of the target protein. So once in the cell, the protag forms this active ternary complex by simultaneously binding the E3 ligase and the target protein, and therefore bringing the target protein into close proximity of the E3 to mediate target protein ubiquitination and removal of the protein, allowing us to study protein function and activity in a bit more detail. So I'm sure you can appreciate that there's quite a few key players involved in this mechanism of protein mediated degradation, which suggests that perhaps there's several factors that could influence protein mediated degradation efficiency. For example, the protein itself, each each constituent part has varying characteristics that could directly or indirectly influence degradation efficiency. And for example, if we focus mainly on formation of the active ternary complex, then flexibility and length of the linker could influence the arrangement of the E3 protac and the protein in that ternary complex. And in the same way, the size and structure of the warheads can also affect how the ternary complex forms, which will have a bearing on the degradation efficiency. So at the stage of protac design, these variable factors can be investigated in vitro to determine the best size and structure of the warheads and the length of the linker region that would lead to the most productive ternary complex formation and optimal protein degradation which is a great starting point for then taking these protacts into cells and investigating any additional impact that cellular factors could have on the degradation efficiency, like cell permeability, for example. And once in the cell, the protac relies on endogenous cellular machinery and more specifically E3 ligases to mediate ubiquitination of the target protein. And so any variation in E3 ligase availability, expression levels, or the subcellular localization of the E3 can have an effect on the degradation efficiency that we observe using protax. And further to this, even if the E3 is available and accessible to the protac, then perhaps there is post-translational regulation of the E3 activity, or there's other regulatory mechanisms that controls E3 function that could also have a, an influence on the degradation efficiency that we observe using protax to recruit these E3s. The most commonly, the VHL, the most commonly used substrate receptors, VHL and Cerebron E3 ligases, are ubiquitously expressed and they readily degrade target proteins as we've seen previously in targeted degradation studies. But as we begin to diversify the pool of E3s available for hijacking for targeted degradation, then it may become important to consider the regulation and function of the E3 and how this could influence the degradation efficiency. And of course, in the same way, 
to degrade the target protein, we need to make sure that the protein is also available and accessible to the protac. And so it may be important to consider if the protein is already abundantly expressed in the cell or if there's external stimuli or transcriptional regulation required to make the protein accessible. Also, if the protein is involved in multiple protein-protein interactions or it's guarded within a large multimeric complex, then this could also make it a bit more challenging for the protac to engage with the protein. And in the same way, if the protein is embedded within a membrane or a vesicle or membrane-bound compartment, then this could also make it a bit more challenging for the protac to engage and therefore influence the degradation efficiency that we observe. And just to continue with this last point, we were particularly interested in this idea that this local context of the target protein and its localization within the cell could have an influence on the degradation efficiency that we see using different protacts. And so we decided to take this further and explore the degradation of DTAG and halo tag proteins in the cell that have been localized to different uh, cellular localizations. And so to localize our proteins to different areas in the cell, we first used a a varying localization signals, such as the SV40 T antigen nuclear localization sequence that directed our proteins to the nucleus. The nuclear export signal that mediated cytoplasmic localization. The signal of mitochondrial fission one directed our protein to the outer mitochondrial membrane. For ER lumen localization, we used the KDEL motif. We used a short stretch of the PEX26 protein to mediate peroxisome localization. For lysosome localization, we used a signal from TMM192 protein. And lastly, for localization to the Golgi lumen, we used the N terminal transmembrane domain sequence of Manosides 2. And so we were mostly interested in looking at the effect of cellular localization on protact mediated degradation. And so to isolate any potential effects from other factors associated with the target protein, we decided to use our own artificial proteins in this study and express them in U2S cells by retroviral transduction. And each protein had one localization signal that I showed you on the last slide as well as a HALO or a DTAG, which would mediate PROTAC recruitment using HALO and DTAG-based PROTACs. We included a flag tag for confirming the protein localization using immunostaining, as well as for immunoblot detection. And we also included the HIBIT tag, which will allow us to employ the split nanolociferase system, where we can reconstitute HIBIT with LGBIT, to generate a luminescent signal that we can then quantify, which would represent target protein levels. To mediate degradation of our target proteins, we used three different protacts, which would also give us a comprehensive overview of how degradation efficiency was affected by different cellular localizations. And so our first protac was DTAG VHL, which generated by our lab that recruits DTAG proteins using the AP1867 bumped ligand shown here in blue, connected to a VHL recruiting ligand based on the VHL interaction inhibitor VH032. Our second protac DTAG13, which was originally developed by Nathaniel Gray's lab, recruits DTAG proteins again using the AP1867 bumped ligand connected to a thalidomide derived moiety, which would recruit cerebron E3 ligases. And lastly, our third protac, Halo Protac E, which was developed here in Dundee by Dario Lessi and Alessio Chuli's lab, recruits Halo tag proteins using this chloroalkane moiety shown here in yellow, connected to a VHL recruiting ligand based on the VHL interaction inhibitor VH zero three, sorry VH two nine eight. Thanks, Lynn. Um, so following the expression of a uh, nuclear localized halo protein um, stably by retro- retroviral transduction in u 2 s cells. We um, investigated the localization of the protein by flag immunostainin, which predominantly overlaid with DAPI nuclear staining, um, confirming that predominant nuclear localization of the construct. Um, and then we treated these cells with increasing, increasing concentrations of halo protein E, um, and then analyzed hybrid levels by hybrid lec assay. And we could observe a concentration-dependent reduction um, at nanomolar concentrations um, with 
he'll go to Ikea after 24 hours. And then similar results were also observed with the DTAG system, following replacement of Halo with DTAG and treating with DTAG VHL or DTAG 13, um, which um, was to be expected based on previous reports that nuclear um, localized proteins are amenable to degradation by protac based technologies. So then similarly, following the expression of um, the cytoplasmic halo, um, halo protein, we performed immunostain, flag immunostaining and could observe um, predominantly diffuse cytoplasmic staining in comparison to DAP nuclear staining, confirming that it was a predominantly cytoplasmic localized protein. Um, and then again, treated these cells with increasing concentrations of halo protaki and observed a similar reduction um, in animal or concentrations. And also observed similar results with the um, DTAG system with DTAG VHL and DTAG 13. Um, and again, um, which supports previous um, um, previous literature that um, cytoplasmic proteins are amenable to degradation by protag based technologies. So then we wanted to confirm that the reduction in halo um, tagged the halo tagged nuclear and cytoplasmic protein um, was facilitated both by DHL and by the Cullen machinery. So we pre-treated um, cells in the presence of the DHL inhibitor. MBH298 or um, the pan cullen nidulation inhibitor MLN4924. And under these conditions, we can observe a prevention in um, the reduction in flag um, protein levels um, detected um, in the presence of halo protaki, suggesting that um, the reduction in uh, flag tagged protein levels of halo protaki is, uh, requires VHL and cullen uh, uh, activity. And that similarly, when we pre-treat um, these cells with NG132 or uh, bortezomib, the proteasome inhibitors, um, we observed a similar prevention and reduction um, with haloprotaki, suggesting that um, uh, haloprotaki mediated degradation of these proteins uh, requires proteasomal activity. And similar results were also observed with both DTAG VHL and DTAG 13. So then going forward, we then wanted to look at the outer mitochondrial localized protein and following expression in U2S cells um, observed um, flag immunostaining that overlaid with the, uh, the mitochondrial marker ATPB, confirming that it was predominantly mitochondrial localized. Um, and following un, uh, treating these cells with haloprotaki, you could observe robust degradation at animal concentrations. Um, which we also observed with the DTAG system with treating with DTAG 13. But what we didn't observe, um, we observed no degradation with DTAG DHL, um, suggesting that not only the localization and then the recruiter use, but to potentially the E3 that's recruited as well can influence the degradation efficiency. Uh, we then looked at the ER localized protein, uh, halo protein. Um, and observed that flag immunostaining predominantly over, uh, overlaid with the Kelnex and ER marker staining, suggesting predominant um, ER localization of this protein, and observed um, robust degradation with halo protaki at nanomolar concentrations, um, which we also observed with the DTAG system with both DTAG VHL and DTAG 13. And then again, to confirm that this requires um, VHL and Cullen um, activity. Um, we observed the, a prevention and the reduction um, of DTAG, um, the ER localized DTAG protein um, in the presence of VH298 or MLN4924. And similarly as well, following proteasome um, inhibition with MG132 or bortezomib, we observed a rescue in the degradation with DTAG VHL. So to um, summarize the first part of um, our findings, we observed that all localizations tested so far, including nuclear cytosolic, outer mitochondrial, and ER localized halo tag proteins were all amenable to degradation. Um, however, we observed slight differences with the DTAG system. For example, um, outer, outer mitochondrial membrane localized um, FKBB12 was not amenable to degradation with DTAG VHL. So then moving forward, we then wanted to look at um, some of the more novel localizations, such as at the peroxisome. Um, so following expression of the halo type peroxisome protein, we observed um, overlaid staining, uh, flag immunostaining with the um, peroxisome marker catalase, suggesting predominant peroxisome localization. 
and observed robust degradation when treating these cells with halo protaki. However, replacing halo with DTAG, we didn't observe any robust degradation with DTAG BHL or DTAG 13. And then moving on to the lysosome um, that following stable expression, and um, we observed flag immunostenin to overlay um, with the um, the the, per, the lysosome marker LAMP1, um, and that when treating these cells with increasing concentrations of haloprotac, you observed robust degradation with the haloprotac. And similarly, reflect, reflecting the peroxisome um, localized protein, again, with the lysosome localized DTAG, we observed no robust degradation with DTAG BHL or DTAG 13. And then finally, we then moved on to looking at the Golgi protein. Um, which predominantly flag immunostenin overlaid with the Golgi marker GM130, confirming predominant Golgi localization. Uh, and interestingly, this was the first um, localized protein, halo protein that we observed didn't degrade um, robustly uh, with all concentrations of halo protaki tested. And similarly as well, we observed no robust degradation with DTAG VHL or DTAG 13. So to kind of go back to our, our initial summary, um, when then adding um, the peroxisome localized protein, we observed robust degradation with the halo protac, um, but not with the BHL or cerebellum recruiting DTAG um, degrader, um, which was reflected with the lysosome localized proteins as well. Um, however, interestingly, the Golgi localized halo um, tagged protein was the first that we didn't observe to be robustly degraded with the halo protac um, or was not amenable to degradation with the DTAG um, system either, which really took our interest. And we thought it'd be really interesting to further investigate um, the, the observer, observations that uh, we've seen with the Golgi localized proteins. And we, we postulated that it'd be interesting to follow this up and determine whether or not um, the Golgi localized protein can form active ternary, com well, uh, ter form ternary complexes with the protac and E3, um, and whether or not the Golgi protein can be uh, ubiquitolated or not. Um, and to address this, we would like to employ cellular nanobrit based assays um, to look into this further. And also, we postulated whether or not this translates to endogenous Golgi localized proteins as well. Um, and whether or not it may be worthwhile to, to look into degradation efficiency by potentially Golgi localized E3s such as POSH that's been previously reported in the literature. And so just as a part and thought as well, we found that using the three different protacs in our study that Halo Protac E performed the best as it could robustly degrade proteins at each of the localizations apart from the Golgi where we didn't observe any degradation as Luke explained. And we th thought that it'd be interesting to consider this degradation pattern in the context of this computational analysis that was published last year, where the authors have generated a pool of predicted protactable proteins from the proteome after filtering the proteins through these chosen parameters. So briefly, the authors looked at things like whether the protein ha had potential ubiquitolation sites that could be targeted by E3s, whether the proteins were already targeted in clinical trials by optimized degraders, and indeed in the wider protact literature, if they already had optimized degraders targeting the protein, whether there's any small molecule binders already known for the protein that can be hijacked for protact technologies, whether the protein had a relatively long half-life, so therefore it would justify using a protact-based approach for targeting of the protein. And they also investigated the, how the cellular location of the protein could influence its protectability and whether the protein, the location was favorable or unfavorable for targeting using protacts. So of course, we were most interested in this last parameter of looking at cellular location as uh, indicator of the protectability of the protein and how the authors ranked each localization. And on a scale of one to seven, they ranked levels one and two as good locations, which included the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Levels three and four were gray areas, including the cell membrane or organelle membrane, which might be a bit more challenging to target proteins here using protax. And levels five, six, seven were deemed unfavorable, which included inner mitochondria and extracellular space, where it could be difficult to use 
a protact-based approach <coughs> to target the protein of interest. So to return to our findings, perhaps we've expanded this predicted general overview of proteins, whether they're protactable based on a cellular location by showing robust degradation of membrane-bound proteins at membrane-bound organelles using Haloprotec E. I'm suggesting that potentially more localizations in the nucleus and the cytoplasm could efficiently be targeted in the cell. And of course, it'd be really good to take this forward and look at more endogenous localization specific targets to see if we still observe the same degradation pattern. And with that, we'll finish. And just a quick acknowledgement of the Gopal Sapkota lab that have been very helpful in, in the design of this project and helpful discussions throughout, particularly Fong and Abby, who generated data towards the project we haven't presented today, and indeed the rest of the Sapkota lab members, as well as the MRC PPU support teams here in Dundee that um, are the, and particularly the tissue culture team, reagents and services, DNA sequencing, Dundee Imaging Facility, who helped with the microscopy imaging, and particularly Jennifer Crooks, who helped clone in all of our constructs, as well as Natalia for synthesis of the DTAG VHL Protag that we've used in the study. So thanks very much for listening to us, um, and we're grateful to take any questions.